Bueno, vamos con más anticipos de la entrevista de Cristiano Ronaldo, eh, que se va a conocer entre, entre mañana y pasado mañana en su totalidad. Eh, hoy hemos conocido tres clips, tres pedacitos de, de, de la entrevista. La primera que voy a poner ahora, eh, perdón que está en inglés, pero la cuento más o menos para aquellos que, que no, no la entiendan, la van a ver por todos lados y, y traducida. Habla de la familia Glazer, los dueños del Manchester United. Hay un par de cosas que a mí se me hacen increíbles que pasen. Uno, que los Glazer nunca hablaron con Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo no ha hablado nunca con los dueños del, del Manchester United. Y deja muy claro, Cristiano, que, que a los dueños del club el, el club no les importa. Les importa desde el punto de vista económico, les importa de, desde, desde toda esa estructura en la cual pueden ganar dinero, pero no les importa construir un equipo para ser campeón. Y, y lo que hemos visto del Manchester United en las últimas temporadas, yo no sé si decir que no les importa pero sí que han ido tapando agujeros permanentemente y que no han logrado desarrollar un plan para que Manchester United vuelva a ser un equipo top. Y de hecho lo dice Cristiano, en los próximos dos o tres años el Manchester United será muy difícil que se transforme en un equipo top. Esta es la primera parte de lo que conocimos hoy de la entrevista donde Cristiano habla de los dueños del Manchester United y su poco interés o nulo por lo que pasa en la cancha. Los of del club, they, listen, they don't... The Glazers. The Glazers, they don't... They don't care about, about the club. I mean, professional uh, sport. As you know, this Manchester is a marketing club. They will get his money from the marketing. The sports, it's they, they don't really care, in my opinion. Do you ever talk to them, the Glazers? Never. Never? Never. Not since you've gone back? No. They give all the power to the president, the sport directive. A lot of Manchester United fans are very negative about the Glazers. They think they're taking all the money out and not spending enough on players, on the infrastructure issues you talked about. Do you think the fans are right? The fans are they're always right. I think the fans should know the truth, should know that the players, we want the best for the club. I want the best of the club. This is why I'm coming to Manchester United. This is why I love this club. But you have some things inside the club which is don't help to Manchester reach the top level as City, Liverpool and even now Arsenal, for example, which is, is complicated, it's difficult, um, it's hard. In my opinion, it will be hard for Manchester to be in the top of the game the next two, three years. <laughs> En esta parte de la entrevista que vamos a ver ahora, Cristiano habla de, de dos ex compañeros, de Gary Neville y de, y de Wayne Rooney, que han sido dos de sus máximos críticos en, en este proceso y en este periodo de, del Manchester United. Principalmente arranca hablando de, de Wayne Rooney, con quien además fue compañero de equipo por muchos años. Eh, Cristiano dice, entre otras cosas, que que no sabe si la televisión obliga a que sean críticos con una voz tan alta para, para generarse fama o, o por qué lo hacen, pero que no escuchan ni conocen su parte y que ve cómo principalmente Gary Neville y, y Wayne Rooney salen a la televisión y a hablar y a, y a generar ruido sin conocer su parte de la historia. One of your biggest critics has been, and I'm surprised about this, Me too. Wayne Rooney. For example, who you played with for many years very successfully and were good friends with him. And yet all this year, three or four times, he's come out and attacked you in the media. Pierce, I don't understand. Uh, you should ask this question to him, but I don't know. Um, I don't know why he criticized me so bad or... Is it jealousy as well, perhaps, that you're still playing and still in the probably, United States? Probably, probably, because he finished his career with 30s. So I'm still playing high level. I'm not going to say that I'm looking better than him, which is, is, is true, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it's, that it's, is inarguable. I mean, there's no contest. It's, it's hard to listen that kind of criticism and negative about people who we play with you. For example, Gary Neville as well. Yeah, I mean, Gary Neville, you blanked him the other day uh, on the pitch and he looked quite upset, actually, because um, he obviously likes being your friend, but... He's been pretty critical of you as well. When the the people have... Can, have, can have his own opinion, but they don't really know what's going on, for example, inside the, the, the training ground and Carrington area or even my life. They should listen not only one point of view. They have to listen my point of view as well. 
because it's easy to, to criticize, but if you don't know the old story, it's, it's, it's easy, you know. But it's, Pierce, as I said before, it's, it's part of... Are they of, still friends of yours, or do you have a line where... They are not my friends. Do you feel a bit betrayed when they do that, because, yes. you, because you play together? It's easy, it's easy to criticize. I don't know if they have a job in television that they must criticize to, a, to be more famous. I really don't understand. Do you but think they use your name a bit to... I think they take advantage of that because they are not stupid. And I really understand and I have to carry on with my life with criticize, criticize or, or when the people speak good about you. But it's hard when you see people who was in the dressing room with you criticizing that way. It must hurt It's not good. Yeah. Yes, I did. But not hurt. I, I, I'm not going to be more slim. I'm not going to sleep bad because of the criticize. But it's not good to listen that. Disappointing. A little bit, yes. Mm. Disappointing. Y para el final dejo una parte que me parece la más dura de, de, de todo. Eh, Cristiano Ronaldo dice que cuando habla con el presidente del Manchester United y, y por el motivo por el cual no hace la pretemporada es para contarle que tenía problemas de, de salud su hija y que estaba y que estaba internada. Y que Cristiano cree, no, no lo puede certificar obviamente, pero, pero uno percibe cuando tiene este tipo de conversaciones, me imagino, eh, que, que no le creen en el club. Que, que estaba todo este tema de que Cristiano se quiere ir, que Cristiano quiere la Champions, que Cristiano tiene que jugar Champions, que el Manchester United no le va a dar Champions League. Y que cuando Cristiano llama y, y prioriza claramente, y lo explica en esta parte de la entrevista, prioriza a su familia ante cualquier otra cosa, y eso lo haría y lo va a hacer en, en, en cualquier orden o en cualquier momento de su vida, le queda la sensación, que sería tristísimo y muy mal por parte del club, que el presidente del club, en el fondo, no le creyó. You lost your baby son and now your baby daughter's in the hospital. Exactly. And you must have been absolutely... I spoke with the directive of, and the president of uh, Manchester United and then kind of that didn't believe that something going wrong, which is, is make me feel bad. Really? Yes, I, yes. They didn't believe you? They believe you, but in the same way, they are there and never peace ever going to change uh, the health of my family for the football. Never. Now or 10 years uh, behind or forward, And it's something that really hurt me because they doubt of my words that I struggle, especially Bell and Gio. We had one week in hospital because the Bell have a big problem. And I didn't go to the preseason because of that, because I didn't, I didn't, was allowed to left my family if something happened to do it the preseason because I think it wasn't not fair to left my family for a preseason. This is why I didn't go.